Welcome back to the next of a video session. They are bringing a hang scenario. So in this video we are going to look at our first uh, one of the major problems which every website um, gets performance issues. So and I say hang I meant uh, a page takes a long time to respond or it doesn't even respond uh, you know scenarios like this. So let's get details. What is a hang or a slow response? A hang is identified when an application seems to stop responding to incoming request. So page you know load pages load slow or um, it doesn't even load at all. So you see your browser keeps spinning. Um, in the performance monitor you look at it and then request gets starting queued or we get messages like server too busy or timeout errors in our event log or in the page itself. So these are these are the symptoms of hang or slow response. So it's very important that how or how to identify hang or slow response. Okay, so one of the easiest thing we can do is if uh, if we can reproduce the problem, we can simply look at the developer toolbar. So, so for that we can look at the Chrome, and I have my website you know saved here in localhost, and I'm going to go to featured product. Before that, uh, what we have to do is we press on F12 and I am going to browse to one of the page which I see in my application as uh, featured products dot ASPX okay and if you look at this one you can see that it took some time to load and this is the same application we have uh, set up um, during the first uh, of the video series, first of the first couple of lessons we went through. Okay, so when I went to feature products dot ASPX page, sometimes it it comes back fast, sometimes it takes some time. So how can we see that? We have this time taken field here. If you see, you can actually see that it took some time. It's like 6.32 seconds. It took took this one back. So this is just one request which I made. I made a couple of requests like this and you see the same, you know, it takes five seconds. So this is something which you may see in your application. Uh, when you actually um, browse to your application, which is whether hosted locally or hosted uh, in in, a, in your server, you see uh, and it, some page is taking time. So an easiest way to figure out which page is taking time is looking at this timestamp. Whether you know it will tell you uh, how long the request you know took to respond back, and you can you know click on this guy actually see how long we waited and stuff like that. So um, one 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 thing is that. Sometimes the page may look like loading slow, whether it's it is like keep spinning. So it can be like maybe you know a couple of other resources which we load in the page like ads or something else, which may take some time. So it's important to actually isolate which request is taking time and the most the easiest way to do that is the developer toolbar. If you go and then go to the network tab and then make make sure that it's we are recording and then just reproduce the issue and look at the time taken field okay so that's about uh, using developer toolbar we can do the same thing using fiddler as well so let's do fiddler so i open fiddler and i'm making the same request okay and and say I made the same request and Fiddler also we would be able to see uh, the same details. Okay, so here if you look at this one and go to the timeline tab, here is my request and if you go to the timeline tab you see that it took 5 seconds. This is the request which I selected. If I select another one it will tell you it, it came back in milliseconds. So the good thing about this thing is you can select the request and it will show you in, in a timeline view. So uh, that is you can you 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 can use either, either use developer toolbar or use use Fiddler timeline view to look at the details. Okay, so that's um, how to identify which page is hanging. Now um, we can we have uh, some issues. We we will not be able to reproduce it. Uh, your users will report to you that. Uh, this page or my website is taking time. So how do how do you identify that is taking time? For that we have a tool called Log Parser. So Log Parser is a tool uh, you can download from Microsoft website, which is uh, which will help you analyze the log. It's a simple EXE. Uh, 
um, which you, if you download and install it you will get um, something like log parser this is the command line tool okay and you can see that it's basically uh, installed in log parser and you have log parser dot exe okay um, so I do log parser and I press so I can see uh, it'll give you the, all the help and uh, how, what kind of queries you can run to get the output. So uh, in this one, I have uh, I have a query saved. Okay, so let's go back to that. Okay, and this is the simplest of the query uh, log parser, and I'm doing select. There are many fields which you can do, and what you're querying is the IIS log. So let's look at the IIS log. Okay, so my website is uh, uh, we we have hosted the website in IIS. So here is what it is. So buggy bits. So how do you, how do you identify or how can we see where the logs are? So if you click on the sites node and if you go to the content view, or sorry, if you go to the features view, you would see an ID associated with my website. So buggy bits is my website, and I have ID associated with this called six. Okay, so the logging is basically will be f uh, in a particular folder by default if you go to the logging module it will be in this folder so you copy this guy and you see w3spc there are many folders so identify which folder you have to map the id of the site which is basically by gibbs is id 6 so this is w3spc 6 okay so this is where my logs are and i have already run a command um, which is the same command and I did select time taken and then CS URI stem these are two fields and I run it from that folder which we just found out using IS manager okay so this is W3SVC6 and star log and I'm ordering by time taken descending so this would give me um, the output and this is the time taken field okay which took it is in millisecond and it took to 25 seconds or to like <coughs> to 25 uh, seconds to get this load so how did I get this slowness this is basically uh, think of this is your production machine you just run this command and you would uh, actually get the time taken field okay let's go back to so this is the, the command which this is the query which I ran and I would get an output like this so you can actually select any field there are many many fields when you actually run log parser and um, if you refer the log parser help uh, you would actually get the different fields which you can query but for our uh, purpose all we need is running this query you can actually copy this from the slides and run it all you have to do is find out the path which your IIS logs are present and then run the query okay so we have found out that some pages are taking 20 to 25 seconds um, in our case we found that it is taking five seconds to come back okay so how did that happen so sometimes um, you know you know that when the load increases the time taken actually increases okay so uh, we can we can reproduce the problem using many ways you can actually take the browser and make a request or refresh and make a make number of requests that is one way or we have tools like fiddler fiddler has a feature called replay okay so let's go to that and uh, we have to make sure that we select this guy double click on that and you see that um, for this one a session ID is generated uh, so we have to find a fresh request okay so what you have to do is you if the session ID if you see this ASNet session ID generated um, it's, it's not a good idea to make a lot test with that so normally the way you make a request is you can just click this guy and go to composer and put it in the composer and we can remove all the cookies okay all the cookies associated with it this is this is to make sure that you know there's no session locking mechanism happen for the request and we can make an execute request okay if you make an execute it will we will get the output here itself okay and here is my output okay so I'm gonna delete all the other request okay which is uh, which made from my machine I'm going to delete all these guys and here is what my request 
and if you go to the timeline you see that it took five seconds so uh, this is this is this is an easiest way to reproduce the issue and it it works with a get or post request but make sure that the cookies are not passed because um, a session ID is generated per user and if you make um, you know, if you make it load test using the session ID, that itself can cause some kind of locking mechanism in the session state. So please don't uh, send the cookies. So just like the way we did, we can drag and drop to the composer and delete and then make an execute. So we got a new fresh request, okay? And this fresh request, if you hover on uh, the replay and you see that hold control to reissue unconditionally and hold shift to reissue multiple times. So if you press shift, and press replay it will ask you how many requests you want to make so you can make you can put like a value like 50 and press ok it will make 25 or 50 requests in one stretch so this is like a poor mind slot test so we can do this so it would make uh, this would act like Fiddler will make 50 simultaneous requests and mm, it will hit the server so we, here we can see that our our some pages are taking long time and some pages term, you know takes uh, the default we saw is five second but in this lot test we see that it's taking really long time so um, if we have uh, so this is one easy way to reproduce this this actually works for a get request um, but if you have a post request uh, even that you can actually do with this but you know the, sometimes if the, if your application requires an authentication and all, only after authentication you can actually do a lot test this is not a good mechanism to do that so you have to use specified tools for it like selenium or or you know a load runner or some kind of tools to actually do that automated hung test but uh, simple get request and if you can easily reproduce it then we can easily use this tool so you select all these guys and then go to the timeline you see that the request did take more than five seconds and I see a maximum time of um, you know 55 or 60 up to 60 seconds so this is a hang scenario in my application think of uh, 10 uses uh, at the same time browsing to our application and feature products and is taking 20 seconds so this is a, a scenario which we are running into okay so how how can we go ahead and you know debug this kind of issues because it happens in so uh, it happens in production so we did a simple um, simple not test using fiddler we have tools like tiny get or apache workbench i'll give the references to it and where you can actually do a similar kind of lot test which fiddler did and reproduce the issue or you can use your lot testing tool your favorite lot testing tool okay so uh, if you cannot reproduce the issue uh, there's a way we can actually you know get automated hang dump and I have that uh, we have that in a debugging IO channel and the slow response data collection is a YouTube uh, video there you can go ahead and watch that as well okay so um, in this video we're going to see how we can actually capture the data so once we have so many requests you see that so many requests are still waiting for this icon means it's still waiting for the response to come back so I'm going to do debug diag collection and I'm going to get that and cancel this guy and go to the processes tab and go to w3wp.exe process okay so I'm going to www.exe process and create full user dump. So when you actually do this, when you do create full user dump, when, when you can reproduce the issue, you actually um, now capturing the dump. So I would request you to capture two or three sets of dump like this with a 10 or 15 seconds uh, you know, gap. So we have captured the first dump. We're going to capture the second dump, which is after 10, 15 second delay. So like this, you capture two or three sets of dump. And you can use WinDBG to analyze these dump to figure out the root cause. So I'm going to capture three sets of dump like this okay and uh, once we have captured three sets of dump we will analyze uh, dump using WinDBG okay so this is how the about the data collection part and um, you have to run two commands which we already see tilde star k and tilde star ela star to see what your requests are doing okay and um, that's uh, the first and foremost thing you have to do so let's go to WinDBG so I'm going to get the WinDBG and open the dump. Okay, so I have uh, the buggy bits dump just collected, and I'm just I'm just opening that guy, and 
let's run our first of the commands okay so it will take some time to load it may actually download simple files so it may take some time to load um, load the dumps okay so we have the dumps uh, loaded and now we can do still day star k it will list all the threads running in the in the process okay so we have a lot of threads in this time because we are doing a lot of tests we made a 50 simultaneous request so you would see a lot of requests running okay you may have to wait for some time to actually you know get all the stacks because it will download you may have to wait for some time uh, to download the symbols file okay so the CLR and other symbol files if it's not there it will take some time so this is the stack and now we have to s look at what our requests were doing okay by analyzing the stack so that's uh, this is one way of looking at the stack and this is all native threads now we have to list our E and CLR stack okay this will list all the CLR stacks. So if you if you if you just scroll up, you can see that you know we are in data layer get featured products in one thing, and then we have um, we see that many requests are in this one. Okay, so um, this this is the you know minimal way or the default way to start with debugging a hang by analyzing what our requests were doing. So I'll explain more details about what these methods are, how do we start debugging an ASP.NET application in the next video. Okay, but this is how you started. So I would request you to actually do this on your own before you know jumping into the next video, go through the links, go through that um, the dumps and the stacks and to understand what our process are actually doing. Okay, so I have given also a link here, which basically explains what kind of stacks we can ignore in case of uh, you know debugging an ASP.NET hang. So here you can see that we have so many types of stacks here. Um, we would see um, something like CLR thread pool and so many different kind of stacks there. So we can uh, ignore many of this and only look at the ones which is important. So I have given a link uh, in this one. So you can refer that in this slide deck. Okay, And I've also given the references here, but I would request you to uh, not uh, look at the references just uh, do your own you know study of the stacks and what each stack is doing okay and please watch the next video you don't have to go to the references I will explain these in the details in the next video okay so uh, happy debugging so um, you have to spend some time you know looking at the stack and the details to figure out what is going on okay uh, thank you